my name is Sai Kiran and I have total experience in SAP DAP for 10 years and I've been working uh, as an SAP WAP IDOC faculty for the past five years and I'm an SAP certified development associate a WAP with SAP Nativo 7.4 and as well as uh, a WAP for HANA certified Today, uh, today I'll be discussing um, EDA and ALE basics. This is just a demo class. This is for ALE docs. And the topic for the demo is EDA. What is EDA and ALE? What are its uses? What is IDOC? What is the early processing, and uh, how do you want to, uh, I mean, process IDOCs? It's a brief demo, for uh, of course, for 15 to 20 minutes. So the topic early IDOC is not that complex. If you understand the basic foundation, if you have basic foundation, it's not that uh, difficult to understand. So before jumping into ALI docs, let's see what exactly is EDA and what is the history of EDA. So let's take a simple example. So a customer sends a PO purchase order to a vendor. <coughs> and the vendor receives the PO. The next step, vendor ships uh, the goods via carrier. And the carrier delivers to the customer then the carrier invoices the customer then the customer makes payment via check the check is deposited into the corresponding bank and the funds are transferred right this is a typical scenario a simple scenario so here <coughs> a, a lot of transactions are involved First, he sending the PO, and the vendor again receiving the PO and uh, uh, sending it via carrier, the delivery. So, so many documentation is involved, and a lot of transactions are involved to make it complete. Right. So, before beginning, uh, before going to the EDA. So, uh, if you take the same scenario. So, it's all about the transportation industry. So, the transportation industry uh, in 1970s, it saw a need for the standardization of e-formats, right? Because in the previous scenario, what we discussed, like there are a lot many transactions are involved, so, and a lot of paperwork could be fax or anything <coughs> to reduce or eliminate the same thing, the e-format was introduced but there was no standardization so in 1970s the transportation industry felt that there should be need for the standardization of the e-formats so a committee called ANSI-ASC was formed okay later on in 1980s it should be in 85 EDFACT E-D-I-F-A-C-T electronic data interchange for administration A for administration C for commerce T for transport which was formed right so we discussed EDFACT and ANSI also right EDFACT and ANSI 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 was uh, in the 1970s and EDFACT was uh, introduced in 1980s the basic difference between ANSI and ED fact is ANSI is mainly identified like the documents are identified with the numbers it could be 850 for example so ED fact it is identified by name like orders so in ED fact we call orders 
in ANSI, uh, the same was uh, called with the number like 850. Okay. <coughs> so EDI basically, if you take EDI or ANSI, so basically EDI is, as the name suggests, electronic data interchange. So no paperwork, right? So there should be a proper format of the data. That was the main intention of the inception of EDA. Okay. So let's see what is the format of EDA. <coughs> this is also a typical scenario. See, there's a trading partner X, and he uses EDA software, and he send the data to that trading partner Y. He, the trading partner Y, also uses the same EDA software. Here both can be sender and receiver also. From X, X will be a sender sometime and X can be a receiver also. So there is an exchange of messages between X and Y. Okay, this is a typical structure of ED fact. A simple like it has a header, a trailer and messages. Each message has a message header and message trailer and between the message header and message trailer there are data segments and each data segment is a combination of is a group of data elements the structure of ed fact okay you take a sales order or anything so earlier we all the sales orders or any document in application document uh, can be transferred to a different system in this format header trailer segments format now coming to ALE so ALE is basically an SAP proprietary technology so SAP introduced ALE EDA has been existing long back, right? Uh, so nearly 20 to 30 years, right? 30 years nearly. So ALE is an SAP proprietary technology which is used to communicate between the servers. Okay, so an EDI or electronic data interchange is a process in which the data is transferred between SAP system and another system. The another system, the, the latter system can be a non-SAP system also. Okay, but ALE, when you're talking about ALE, application link enabling. So ALE, mostly it should be between two SAP systems. Okay, and the main difference between EDI and ALE is in the transfer of data. In, sen in the sense, for the EDI, the transfer of data is from IDOC, that intermediate document, to a flat file. But coming to ALE, it is from memory to memory transfer. So the IDOC is sent to, is sent from SAP system to another SAP system. That's memory to memory. So there is no flat file involved with respect to ALE. So let's take a small example, then we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. So <coughs> when a purchase order, when a purchase order from one system becomes a sales order in the latter system, the other system, then we use IDOCs or EDI. But when we want to send a purchase order which should be the same in the latter system. Then we use ALE. Right. In a typical business scenario, your purchase order will be a sales order for the other system. In that scenario, go with the EDI. But you have organization, you have landscape, there your purchase order should be a purchase order in the latter system also in that scenario go with the ALE 
this could be an interview question also and uh, <coughs> uh, normally there are certain common tools which are used for the EDA mapping okay just for example Gentron so because for the EDA or Redox to be implemented a subsystem is required to convert the IDOX to flat file right you're sending your yours is an IDOC like uh, SFA system and uh, you send an IDOC to a non want to send an IDOC to a non SFA system then the file concept comes in right the flat file concept so how who will who will convert that flat flat file is a subsystem that converts your IDOC to a flat file and this is usually maintained by the EAIT we call it enterprise application integration team EAI enterprise application integration team as you know that there are three kinds of people uh, involved uh, in, in, in this SAP world uh, mainly the function consultant, the technical consultant and an EAI, EAI consultant functional consultant gets the requirement technical consultant would write the appropriate code and an EAI consultant would map the requirement fields the required fields of SAP whenever a purchase order is created and uh, we want to send it to vendor via doc the PO is sent in the form of an IDOC to the vendor and that partner has to be EDA enabled in the system then the PO sent as an outbound IDOC by the customer will be inbound IDOC for the vendor ok I repeat the PO sent as an outbound IDOC by the customer will be inbound IDOC for the vendor this is how it happens uh, with respect to IDOC now coming to the slide uh, how many types of there are three types of uh, exchange data mostly one is the transaction data the other one is the master data third one is the control data mainly we concentrate on transaction data as well as master data and coming to the typical architecture of uh, the layers of ALE okay first one is the application layer okay second one is the distribution layer or the ALE layer third one is the communication layer application layer is where basically the IDOC we will see what exactly the IDOC is as of now IDOC is a document intermediate document which holds certain application uh, data it could be purchase order or sales order material master it could be anything so as of now IDOC is a container with a content so uh, IDOC is created in the application layer then it is transferred to the distribution or ALE layer where it basically determines the recipient to whom should the IDOC to whom should this content be sent and should all the content be sent or any restrictions or any filters are there so everything happens in the distribution layer and the last one is the communication layer where we have less control that is the place where basically the operating system takes control and it, the IDOC is actually sent to the receiving system so wha what is an IDOC? how does the IDOC look like and how is data being sent what are the data what is the data being received who is sending to whom is it being sent what has been done with IDOC these are the things that we are going to discuss these three things are very important to understand uh, an IDOC a message type, IDOC type and an IDOC a message type says something about the content that you are writing and IDOC type is a structure of the content IDOC 
is the instance of the idoc type it means it is actual content so you can treat idoc type as stencil okay this idoc type as a stencil which can produce any number of its kind so idoc is something an instance of that idoc type so the something that is produced from the stencil is nothing but idoc okay a simple scenario not a real world scenario could be uh, some example you can take that so that you can attribute the same example here <coughs> simple like you have a stu you have a college and uh, the college is having teachers and students and for every quarter uh, you have to send the details of the teachers and the student to your university that is the typical pattern so how do you do that so you have student and teachers for every quarter you have to send the details so you should have a specific format of the students right you cannot always uh, go and start writing like uh, let's forget about the e, e transfer just uh, as of now just assume that you have a piece of paper with you so how do you write you write name of the student the class the student is studying in and the subject student is studying in so so most of the things like everything the pattern of the student the format is same only the data is different correct so the first thought that can that strikes your mind is like why should I write each and every time the repeated data let's automate so you write if you create a format and you take the uh, copies of the format the next time you will not be writing that uh, name of the student and the subject of the student you will be writing the actual name name of the student Vikshat class of the student so grade 3 right <coughs> so by doing that you can reduce the manual work right so you have the format that format is nothing but idoc type okay you have a stencil format you write okay this is the format I need that's nothing but idoc type and once you fill you have to take that a sheet of paper with that format and you start writing about a student A so you have written uh, you have just entered some details with respect to student A and that that paper is complete that piece of paper is complete then it becomes an idoc then again you take the same sheet of paper and you fill the details of student B then it becomes another idoc idoc type is same the structure is same but the more number of student details that you are right entering so each and every piece of paper sheet of paper becomes an idoc and message type coming to message type you take the same example so basically there are two different categories one is student the other one is the teacher so on each on each sheet of paper that you're going to fill you, you write a heading teacher you write the heading student so by looking at the heading of course they'll come to know your this is regarding the teacher so teacher will have a different format means teacher will have a different idoc type in the point so the message type says <coughs> what kind of message is being exchanged that's what uh, the technical term says here this is how it looks like see the, the basic type and the idoc type are synonymous so we can interchangeably use in the same both the terms basic type as well as idoc type for this particular orders 05 basic type how does it look like let's go so so this is the typical structure of an idoc for orders 05 it could be a, sa a sales order let's suppose you are selling some details of a sales order sales order is an application object right in sap if you go to via zero one transaction and save a sales order even if you write even if you fill only few fields of via zero one but <coughs> there are a lot many tables where some data will be inserted into right so many tables are involved in a single via zero one transaction save so orders zero five sap has uh, SAP tried to involve all those tables in this particular format it means like you have different segments here you call the segments E1, EDK, 0, 1, 14 these are all called segments so 
each segment each segment is a combination of I'll show you see E1 K N A 1 M E is a segment segment E is a combination of field the right side you see M S J F N right it's a combination of fields for this particular E1 K N A 1 M segment okay so segment does not actually carry anything but it is a group of fields and each field carries some data it's just like a heading in the same student example uh, you don't normally write the details of student right like that you have you group the details right for the first group could be student bio data and the second group would be student academic data the third one is the student address right and in each group you write under the student bio data right <coughs> date of birth right father's name mother's name right so the student bio data heading does not hold anything basically but it is a collection of fields similarly segment does not hold anything but segment has a group of fields which actually contain some data So three groups, so here three segments, similar to that. So this is how a uh, IDOC uh, uh, looks like. Once you fill an IDOC, like once you fill the student details, it becomes the actual sheet with respect to student A. Similarly, this is an IDOC which is derived from an IDOC type. So you can see base debmas 06 this is one an adoc type standard adoc type so an idoc has been derived by using debmas 05 structure so it becomes an idoc and it has got a number and the structure of idoc will be like this one is a control record next one is the data record third one is the status records control record is something where we write to whom should this idoc be sent what kind of idoc is there what is whatever you see or here technical this thing this all uh, carried uh, this all says about the to address and also about the from address it's just like envelope okay and the next one is the data records which is the actual data that you are going to send by this idoc third one is the status record status record is just like an acknowledgement basically like whether the idoc has been sent from here or uh, it's not not exactly like acknowledgement but at least in our system whether this IDOC has been sent to the system other system or uh, is there any problem while sending the IDOC it's all the status records this is called data record I told you and uh, this is the control record that I was saying which kind of IDOC are you sending, which kind of data are you sending and to whom are you sending all the details will be in the control record the data record the actual data that you're sending status record says that uh, what is the actual status like what is the is, is it successfully sent or is there any error by looking at the status of the message we can come to know like is it, is it a successful IDOC or an IDOC in error and uh, these are certain t codes basically we use uh, to create idoc segments um, since this is a demo class i am not paying much attention on these uh, slides how to create a segment i told you like segment is just a group of fields basically so you create a segment the name this is structure you can say what is an idoc type okay this is the way basically you have to attach segments to an idoc what is the message step and all the t codes to create message types and what are the configurations so configurations like you have an idoc basically to you have to send the idoc to a system b you are a system a and you are sending it to system b how can you send data to system b you cannot send directly unless you have the connection to the system b so that's why all these things like logical systems you create an adequate logical system then uh, you have to create the ports and next RFC destinations customer model partner profiles 
these all come under configurations okay we'll see what exactly logical system because since this is demo system demo class then I'm not paying much much attention on these uh, configurations okay this is how basically this is the RFC destination where you have to give the other systems that is system B that is the receivers connection details and this is the port basically as this say port is a logical representation of a communication channel that could be port like you are sending uh, <coughs> take a simple scenario like you are sending uh, some uh, letter which was wrapped in an envelope and uh, you are sending it to a uh, receiver the receiver is just an assembly it could be a big organization okay so there uh, to which through which door should that particular letter be sent to the receiver so the door that there, there could be multiple doors to that particular uh, receiving system let's not talk about receiving system that the receiver address through one door uh, big trucks uh, enter through other doors some cars will enter the through other main door uh, only the pedestrian center just port is nothing but some kind of a gate right for uh, transaction RFC one port is there for file there is another port so for ABAP we use TRFC transactional RFC port this is what say port is the logical representation of a communication channel now with the partner profile so partner profile uh, is a mutual understanding between the receiver and the sender you cannot send any kind any kind of data to the particular receiver even if you have established the connection in the previous uh, slide you have established the connection right uh, like RFC connection even you have the successful RFC connection and you are able to access the other system you cannot send any kind of <coughs> data any kind of messages to the receiver system that should be approved from your end right this is a partner profile that should be maintained from the sender end in your system you have to tell to your system that boss this is the receiver and this is the kind of so this is the receiver means partner number so this is the partner or the receiver to whom I am sending this particular uh, data this particular data depends on the way the message step that you have defined in the outbound parameters okay <coughs> other than that it will not accept so your sender system will not accept other than this particular message type whatever uh, you have uh, uh, not mentioned here those types of messages will not be considered for outbound transfer so basically there are two types of transfers one is the outbound data transfer the other one is the inbound data transfer you send you send an IDOC to the outside world it will be an outbound you receive an IDOC it will be an inbound this is how you have to maintain the outbound parameters the partner number is nothing but the receiver this is the message type and the receiver port port is nothing but which is the uh, alias name for uh, RFC destination because we map the port with the RFC destination so RFC destination value have seen which is a collection of username password and the application server name <coughs> this is a basic type and extension that we will see later and <coughs> we use certain function modules to create an IDOC and we pass the IDOC to LE layer this is one of the main function modules that is used to create IDOC outbound IDOC basically okay. and uh, this is an EDI DD structure so that we'll see later so how to fill the segment how to fill the IDOC segments with the data So till now we have seen outbound processing. Now coming to inbound processing, you receive an IDOC. What do you do? You send an IDOC. That's 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 good. From A to B. With respect to B, 
B as soon as it receives an IDOC something should happen right an event should be triggered right so you receive an IDOC and a functionality should be triggered so functionality is nothing but a function module so you basically you have to write a function module in the inbound system okay which actually receives the inbound IDOC and as per the data of the inbound IDOC it does some functionality basically the main purpose of inbound IDOC with respect to inbound system is to post an application document mostly that's what it says you send an, uh, you send a sales order from your system then the other system what does it, uh, it do either it creates the sales order or it changes the existing sales order right so any application document is posted that's what it says is another partner profiles inbound I told you the partner profile is a mutual understanding and with respect to inbound I told you like inbound as soon as a message a, an IDOC with a particular message type is received something some functionality should be triggered so this is nothing but the process code process code is nothing but a, fun a function module process code is nothing but a function module which will be triggered once it receives a data from this particular system sorry from this partner number and with this part with this message type trigger only this partner trigger this uh, process code or the function module when this particular message type is received from this particular partner so these are certain uh, T codes which will be maintained uh, <coughs> in our system in the inbound system so this is the place where we write our function modules and uh, <coughs> certain configurations are there uh, which basically we link our message type with the basic type and uh, the process code and the function modules <coughs> there are a series of transaction codes not more than six or seven in each system not more than six to seven in each system it's very simple and uh, there are other T codes where basically you can reprocess an IDOC you receive an IDOC and uh, there is some error so you reprocess why do you reprocess normally simple scenario would be something like that you send a sales order you create a sales order in your system and you try to uh, send that sales order to the other system okay sales order with sale sold to party as XYZ okay so other system receives it and it tries to create the sales order but it goes into error because the sold to party XYZ does not exist then what do you do you create the sold to party XYZ in the receiving system then you basically need to ask system your boss I have created I have rectified the error uh, now could you please send the same IDOC to me so that I'll reprocess it again then he will send again there will be an error then you rectify the error and you again go to the system A, send error and ask them, please send me again. So it does not work that way, right? In the organization, you sh keep on rectifying that and you keep on ask keep on asking the same uh, IDOC to be reprocessed. So it's always better that you already received the IDOC with your system. Why can't you reprocess the IDOC? So that's that's uh, that's where the reprocessing of IDOC came into picture. You have the IDOC in your system, you rectify the error and you reprocess it that's what is called reprocessing and there are certain uh, uh, IDOC statuses <coughs> by looking at the status we'll come to know like what is uh, the uh, error we can at least diagnose the error at least we may not pinpoint the error but at least come to know like this could be error so we have uh, uh, <coughs> a series of uh, uh, success uh, status scores we have from 1 to 78 or something so 1 to 50 represent uh, outbound statuses and from 51 to uh, some 73 or 74 78 I suppose represent the inbound IDOC statuses so this is the end of the slides so before closing I just want to show you <coughs> uh, with a simple <coughs> uh, presentation 
with the with the knowledge that you have acquired uh, during the my last class, you can at least attribute that how it looks like. So, quick quick thing. He is writing a letter. Letter is nothing but a content, right? It's my doc. It's content of letter. That it could be customer data. He writes a letter. And he puts it in an envelope. Envelope here is nothing but a control data, right? Control data, which has got some message heading. Now the postman comes into picture, who is nothing but ALG. And he checks the receiver address with accepted receiver list. That's nothing but partner profile, right? W20 that we discuss like whether the receiver is capable of sending sending sender is capable of sending receiver or not and he is the early at the receiver end he's a god basically and the sender goes to the receiver and hands tries to hands throw the letter to the receiver with the username and password he's got the username and password right and he will check everything is okay or not if everything is okay then he goes to the departments different departments so different departments are nothing but different process codes he goes to the receiving office and he hands over to the <coughs> particular department the particular department process the request this is how it happens basically a a another a way of uh, uh, explaining the things could be something like this okay let's assume that uh, there's a sender office and you write some uh, letter the blue one is the letter basically you write it and the you put it in the envelope and hand it over to your postman let us see what each of the figure represents this is nothing but idoc data record what are the records the idoc data record has two segments here the customer address segment and the customer bank details each segment is having three fields house number street city bank name bank account number and FC code okay typical formats two segments for this idoc data that's this one is the idoc control record to whom from whom what is the kind of message this is a customer message he is the sender ali okay what what next <coughs> he has a list of the accepted receivers okay and it's nothing but the partner profile we have already maintained something in the partner profile that partner profile is nothing but a list in your system so you're since you're sending you are a sender so in your system you have a list that is already maintained in w20 partner profile by you so the receiver that is there in the idoc is the receiver there in the partner profile or the receiver list that's what he will check if that is fine then he will <coughs> he will accept this letter and he starts delivering try to uh, he tries to deliver the letter to the receiver otherwise he will not accept this letter everything is fine then he is going to the receiver early layer to the receiver office the blue line is the RFC connection that you have already made RFC connection says application server username password so you can log into the other system that's why he's going to the other system see next what are the receivers see receiver ALG has also got his own partner profile in the receiver system now he checks whether I I am supposed, am I supposed to receive a letter from this sender? From this sender? Yes or no? If that is yes, then he will accept. Otherwise, he will not accept the letter. So you got the difference. In the previous slide, we have seen the, the sender postman checks a list wherein he will check whether I am supposed to <coughs> receive a letter or see I'll go here check the receiver address with the accepted receiver list whether this receiver 
name is there in my accepted list or not that's what he checks in the previous slide now the receiver checks whether I'm supposed to receive a letter from this sender this is nothing but partner profile in the receiver system if everything is okay he has got different departments he will go to each department the concern department see sales department HR department customer department so each department is nothing in a process code a function module right he, he hands that he hands over that letter of customer data to the particular process code in the process code it will process the customer data how process code nothing but customer function module is triggered by the process code so the particular functionality will be triggered and the application document is posted or changed this is, this is the typical scenario of ali doc how it uh, traverses from a <coughs> sender to receiver and uh, uh, the content fry doc The target order could be functional, either could be functional or for a purpose also. Because IDOC is something which is needed, which is expected out of any consultant who puts up more than three years of experience. Definitely. If you are not uh, confident in uh, IDOCs and you are also putting more than three years of experience, then you should learn something about IDOCs. If you go as per planned way, then it's not a difficult for you to understand what exactly is IDOC, and you can very well be uh, working on uh, IDOCs, any kind of IDOC. And the duration would be 25 to 30 hours, maybe for one hour a day. So, expect outcome would be you will obtain in depth knowledge of IDOCs, and you will be able to create or troubleshoot the IDOCs. Mostly for functional people, you should know how to troubleshoot the IDOX. Where is the error? What's going behind? And uh, this is my name. Basically, I put uh, 10 years of experience. I have delivered 12 successful IDOX batches. I take a web also. So, 12 with the count of batches. Maybe batch is having maybe 2 to 3 uh, students. And this is my, you can uh, send a mail to me on this icon.webnw at the rate gmail.com. So, basically, the typical scenario as of now would be something like this because <coughs> if you see this one, so as of now, see there are so many consultancies which are playing a very nasty role. <coughs> so, I can teach something and you want some information you want a course that I can uh, give you but there's no bridge because the gap is already th already there so you don't know me and I don't know you and uh, these consultancies basically they are basically bridging a gap between you and me by taking a lot of money from you and from me also really leakage the candidate pays five hundred dollars faculty gets two two fifty dollars only and the mediator gets two fifty why not we make why not we uh, say no to consultancies and uh, we can uh, <coughs> have a direct uh, trainer training platform that's that that's my idea so let us see how it works so as of now so this is not a consultancy so you can directly approach me and uh, what are the topics of the course okay so the topic of the course will be EDA and ALE basics introduction we have seen uh, only 30% of the demo class. The remaining 70% will be covered in the ALE EDA basics. Next, we will see what is an IDOC segment, why ALE and IDOC, IDOC type message type extension, different ways. There are different ways of triggering IDOCs. There are basically only three ways of triggering IDOCs. Okay, one is our standard, standalone one. So you create, you open a sales order you save the sales order automatically I doubt should be triggered that's standalone that's not sorry that's that's not message control you go go to sales order and you save it 
and uh, a message output triggers and uh, based on the message output an ad hoc will be triggered just message control standard is nothing but a program basically you create a program and the program you call a function module which actually creates an ad hoc and coming to the change pointers change point is not nothing but uh, the receiver is interested whenever there is a change in the material mass let's suppose you you send a material to your uh, uh, branch office and the branch of which is the receiver and that branch office uh, ask you so whenever there is a change in the material uh, color attribute so please send that uh, material data to me so it's not you creating or changing it's based on certain field data of a particular application document this it, it comes under change pointers one is next one is the two ways of triggering ad hoc is outbound ad hoc processing so the two ways types of data transfer is uh, outbound ad hoc processing where you do all the configurations here but the early ad hoc configuration also the second one is the inbound ad hoc processing okay <coughs> third one is the distribution model what is the distribution model basically you send a, an ad hoc to a receiver that's fine but what if there are multiple receivers so in the distribution model you can clearly say that who is the receiver and there are certain filters are also there like you don't want to send uh, ad hoc level center you don't want to send uh, entire ad hoc if it does not match the filter so uh, you want to send uh, the particular customer data who belongs to particular customer group not all the customers who are created in that scenario what do you do you have to put a filter the same time seg segment level also you don't want to send uh, the student uh, take the same student example you don't want to send uh, um, the student by data if the student uh, uh, on for a particular criteria is met then you should not be sending the student by data segment that can be handled uh, in the distribution model you can see reduced message types and we'll be seeing all the complete end-to-end -end standalone scenarios creating and sending a standalone from one appearance server to another appearance server and we'll be uh, seeing the message control one also scenario for the message control scenario for the change pointers the three kinds of uh, uh, three ways of triggering guide dogs will be will be looking into three different scenarios and uh, how do we reprocess an IDOC? and enhancement to standard art this is very important for the web person basically most of the times we'll be enhancing we may not be creating our own basic types we'll be working on the standard ones SAP has already given us standard IDOC types okay you need to just enhance the standard one so what are the user exists for that are there any baddies for this IDOCs all those things extending an IDOC SAP has given us an IDOC structure okay y and uh, extension extending ID comes into picture when let's suppose in the sales order in the additional data B you add a new field as per your business requirement but before that SAP has already given us a model 05 IDOC structure which can accommodate all the fields of the sales order but can it accommodate the new field that you have added in the sales order screen no then you go with the extending IDOC you have to create your own segment for that new seg new field in the sales order screen then you have to append that segment to your IDOC type then it can be able to then it then it will be able to capture the new data that is entered by the user in the VA01 screen for that particular additional data we new field that's called extension extending IDOC what are the important reports tables statuses and programs how do you troubleshoot outbound inbound ad hocs? This is also very important. Basically, this is very important, and you'll be seeing practical real-time scenarios, and uh, I'll be providing some interview questions also, and certain scenarios uh, covering some points, extending Mara table, and all those scenarios, and these scenarios cover both outbound and inbound also. what the different kinds of errors basically that occur in uh, IDOCs so mostly we'll be covering uh, most of the things basically so we'll, since we'll be providing some scenarios uh, <coughs> real-time scenarios so 
you will be very thorough and you can directly work on any kind of idox ok so the session will be for one hour per day and at least you have to spend uh, 15 to 20 minutes after the session is over or before the next session commences and uh, uh, the session goes as uh, like a weekly five day session and it sometimes on Saturday Sundays I may take uh, one hour or two hour session depending on the <coughs> holidays or vacations that uh, um, we normally encounter so have a good day and contact me on these numbers or on this uh, mail ID so I'll be teaching a web also I have my web content also with me okay so I'll be taking a def separate uh, session for the web okay so so I have separate uh, formula for this web and uh, it goes up to 40 days okay for a web it's 40 days and for IDOC it's about uh, uh, a month basically 30 days a web it goes to 40 to 45 days mostly so thanks a lot